I think Maine is a great place for a forest-based economy. And we've got to start with the thing that we have a lot of, wood. And uh, it's, wood is the most environmentally sound material on Earth. And it's, you know, it's because we, it's renewable, it's carbon neutral, it's highly versatile, it's grown with relatively little effort, especially in Maine. And uh, most <coughs> important, it's produced and stored in the form of forests that provide a wide array of forest ecosystem values. So a factory of sorts and a, you know, and a fam fantastic place to be, unlike lots of factories. And those, those other ecosystem benefits are things that we often take for granted and are not sold, but are part, come naturally from, from the process of growing wood in the forests and, you know, clean air, water, biodiversity, you know, wildlife habitat in the west, grazing, but recreation and aesthetic places. So depending where you are, these are the, these are the values that come off of it. The other thing about wood is that it emits a lot less carbon than other kinds of products, and this is the uh, amount of... Uh, additional carbon that was, uh, or would be saved uh, as from the atmosphere if you use wood as energy, wall studs, floor joists, and so forth. So the research is pretty clear. Wood is a really environmentally sound material and for emitting less carbon. It also can, forests can also store carbon, take it out of the atmosphere and store it, particularly in the, in the these, there's a multiple rotations, I won't go into the details, but this, you can accumulate carbon with substituting wood for the other other uses uh, in the forest product pools that come out of it. So managed forest can accumulate carbon uh, over periods of time. The other thing we know is that the world is going to need more wood products. <coughs> and this is the reason. Pop human population, it's, uh, it's increasing. Uh, this is sort of the projection here by 2050 of 9, nine billion people and uh, they're going to need wood. One of the things we know is population increases, wood consumption increases. And there's the blue line is human population growth, and the yellow line is the wood products, wood used. And uh, even though the per capita use has dropped off some, it's, uh, the line is still going in the other direction. People need wood products and will use them. As their income changes, they, it, uh, the amount of wood consumed in uh, increases and if we look at other parts of the world that all they have to do is just change their uh, standard of living a little bit and the demand for wood products goes up and as a result of that the projections out the 2060 here for uh, blue line for round wood de world demand and wood pulp based products particularly paper and paperboard are really quite positive and so there's there's a world demand for what Maine produces so why is this a great place to uh, s uh, grow wood and sell wood products? Uh, well, we, this is a map of uh, biomass production in the United States, and you can see the darker green areas have higher production capacity for woody biomass. Sin Maine has a high uh, productivity in that area nationally. The chunk of wood that we grow Merchantable wood in the state annually is would be a, if you could compress it all together is a chunk of solid chunk of wood almost over 843 feet on a side wide deep and high which would be a block of wood that the height depth and width of the Trans America building in San Francisco so there's a and that's the sustainably produced wood on a on an annual basis. We our forest inventory. That's the amount of uh, wood volume. The forests that are out there today are double what they were in the from 19 in 1930, and it's a fairly stable inventory producing that big chunk of wood. And we've been harvesting this. Oops, uh, we've been harvesting this wood pretty uh, you know sustainably. This is our growth to harvest ratio, and so we've been that block of wood we've been using in the forest products sector. Uh, over t over time, unlike a lot of regions, and I think this is a real strength, is that the particularly the soils and the, con the history we have here has produced a wide array of tree species that offer a wide array of different kinds of products. So there's a diversity of fiber that is naturally available not only within stands but across across the wood producing portions of Maine. Maine has the highest level of uh, sustainable certification. 
and the, the green areas are those lands that are certified 50% of the state's forest land, definitely a national leader in that area. Um, I've lived in regions where most of the forest land is owned by the government, 90%. When I was in Canada, when I, was in, when I lived in Oregon, 60% of the land, forest land was owned by the government. Maine is, is unique in that it has 93% private land, which means you have a, a, a completely different capability to do certain things in the uh, private with the private sector and Maine is unique if you look at it nationally is, is one of the largest contiguous blocks if not the largest contiguous block of private commercial forest land in the US uh, it's it just makes forest management and capturing it a completely different thing it's a huge advantage Maine does all of this at wood production within a day's drive of some of the richest people on planet earth there's the you know, household income and the, the Northeast uh, income profile is not matched in very few places in the world where it's matched, and we're producing wood wood products very close to that marketplace. <laughs> These are shipping lanes. Maine has a, has a, is in a pretty good place geographically uh, to capture shipping lanes, and this is the way wood fiber and all other products are moving around around the world economy. One of the one of the most of the greatest advantages Maine has had is that, and I and I compared to many other regions I've visited and been in, is this uh, diverse products. We've got uh, bioenergy plants, a dozen or so of those, paper mills and sawmills. This provides a marketplace for the state for high grade wood and also a full range of low grade wood with through all these production facilities. Huge, huge advantage. I've, I, it was, I was shocked when I first <coughs> came here and saw the log sorts that are in, in Maine, a dozen of them sometimes. I've never seen such a thing. I, I, it was amazing to me, it still is. Uh, and, and it's an advantage that other places don't have. Um, of course, the news is the news. And we've lost a major uh, marketplace from uh, mills in the Penobscot River Valley. Uh, and it's this fundamental shift is going on now and obviously presenting a lot of challenge for the production of uh, paper products and and also wood demand that is is being sorted out as we uh, as we speak and it's easy to get dark about that but um, I'm reminded that uh, within uh, my mother-in-law just died at 92 and her mother would have could have seen this so in less than two human lifetimes the forest product sector has changed in ways that are inconceivable. So we can have rapid change in a, a very short period of time with the right kind of uh, technology and investment and thinking to, uh, to, to capture that wood product in, in different ways. This is not that long ago. So what are some of the new and emerging opportunities, and I'm sure there's others in this room that are far more qualified than I am to talk about this, but I get to, being working at a university, I get to see some things that are, you know, being researched and whatnot. Uh, one of the things that's really exciting are uh, CLT <coughs> panels, these cross-laminated timber panels. There's a lot of excitement in the architectural community. Uh, these huge panels uh, sequester a lot of carbon makes them it makes uh, them a, a fantastic option for green building and they can be architecturally really quite attractive and there's a, a move architectural movement to start building tall buildings again with wood so this provides a huge opportunity it's something that Maine is in a position to capture as this uh, as this uh, moves forward but you just don't doesn't take much research on the internet to see this is an exciting period uh, a couple of years ago, I was in uh, Vexio, Sweden, and it it's claims to be the greenest city in Europe. And they decided back about 1980 that they were going to become, they were going to get off of oil completely. They had a huge wood-based economy, and they the, the, the red bars are their consumption of oil. And by uh, 2002, they had all they had pretty well eliminated the use of oil and have a huge uh, facility outside of town that provide all their heating and cooling re requirements. All of it wood-based and the, the ethic was to reduce the carbon footprint of their community and take maximum advantage of the wood products that they had. So it's, a, it's, it's an amazing place in that regard. 
Um, that sort of thinking about greenhouse gas policy is you know, rippled across Europe, and there's a, this is the demand curve on wood pellets, and the, the <clears throat> Europeans cannot produce enough wood pellets to support their, um, their policy. There's lots of exciting things going on with uh, wood fiber based products and, uh, and I showed the demand for this kind of thing um, increasing. Uh, you know, where is that going to be? Is Maine going to be part of that or not? Because the demand, world demand is increasing. One of the neat things that we're working on now at the University of Maine and around the country is, are, is nanotechnology and some of the, there are huge uh, opportunities from even using wood and 3D printing, adhesives, and a wide variety of things. So there's uh, some exciting things going on with the use of wood as a platform material for nanotechnology. All of this emerging uh, as we speak. So what can Maine do? And uh, I've worked uh, for uh, 20 years or so with the forest product sector in the state, and uh, so I've had a chance, and I, I work with the forest landowners, and I look at the marketplace, I've helped do research, and the question is what can Maine do to help capture some of these new opportunities? Well, one of the things is that, is that you, when you look around and see that sect like Sweden, when they, they decide collectively that they're going to develop a strategy and start working towards it. Uh, Sweden does this, there's a for, for, uh, forest sector plan for Finland, forest sector plan for the European Union. What are they going to do to capture wood markets and, uh, and become players? State of Minnesota recently completed one as well, and these become comprehensive analyses of what, uh, what the forest product sector looks like, what the markets are, and where they're going, and what they need to do collectively to, to capture that, uh, that vision. So, how could Maine develop a vision uh, and roadmap for its forest sector? This is just a, a thought based on looking at some of these others and my sense of Maine and what we can do. One of the things I've been amazed at in terms of working with loggers and landowners and transportation uh, sector, wood products pulp, is that you, they, you hear the same things from a lot of them and there's never a conversation among them about how they might be able to cooperate on those or even coordinate what the message might be to the legislature. And uh, I, you know, there's there's a need to facilitate the, the you know the aspirations, opportunities, challenges, and obstacles that each of those sectors has, and the common threads that are obstacles are the are the kinds of things that need to be addressed if the sector is going to move forward. The other thing that I have I've yet to see, I've you see little pieces of it, but a, a, a forest products sector analysis for the entire state and the region, and where how is this place going to fit into this global market. So there's an opportunity to figure out what those market trends are. The main a wood supply analysis. We've not done a comprehensive a supply analysis. What, you know, what are the species available, their dimensions, what, is it, what do the next 50 years look like in terms of available merchantable wood, and we can do this on a spatial basis today that we couldn't, could not do before. So what, what, is that, uh, what does that look like? And then ultimately, these three things need to be integrated together. Uh, you know, understand the markets, understand the available resource, and what the leading challenges are to, the, to uh, produce a forest sector vision and roadmap. And this is possible. It's something we can do. Um, but I, I'm not aware of us ever, as a state, looking at this sector and identifying a vision and coordinating uh, what needs to happen on a, uh, as, as a roadmap. So I just offer this up as an idea. Uh, there's, they're, in a, they're in a really, a, obviously, an incredible time of tra transition, particularly with low and uh, poor quality wood material, and uh, there's some opportunities to move us forward.